Hi everyone. Today's fitness video is going to be about um, exercise form. So there's going to be a lot of videos that we do that have the same type of exercises and there's ways to modify it to make it more advanced or on a lower scale, um, depending on where we are. So I do want to go over the forms of each of these exercises and kind of go through the importance of doing them correctly because you can be working out and not doing the right form and you could actually end up hurting yourself. So we're going to go through this video, practice each type of exercise, and um, again, we're going to go over the importance of everything, the warm up, the different exercises, the cool down. Um, all right, so let's get started. We're going to be starting with a warm up. Um, the whole purpose of your warm up is to warm your muscles up. So, you know, when your body gets cold, everything gets very um, stiff. So the more, um, the more warm you get, um, just about right before you're starting to be sweaty, which is where we want you, um, that, that helps your body loosen up so it's, you're less likely to pull any kind of muscle. So we're gonna get started, loosen our muscles up, and then we'll get into the different types of exercises. So here we go. <laughs> For our warm up, we're going to start with a light jog. Now remember, go at your own pace. Into jumping jacks. Warming up the upper body. So start with the shoulder rolls back. Shoulder roll forward. Now lift your arms. Cross. sure okay do you feel loose if you don't pause the video continue to do a little bit more of a warm-up if you're good we're going to get into our first set of exercises so the first one i chose to go over with you would be the plank now there's so many reasons why it's important to know how to do a plank um the main reason is because your core if that's not strong, everything else is going to be hard. So being able to do this correctly will help prevent injuries and it will also help you with other exercises that we do get into. 
So I'm gonna put on some music. I am gonna lower the volume just a little bit. So for a high plank, that's what we're gonna start with. Um, you also hear me say high plank when we're about to get into a push-up. Arms are straight. You want to make sure that your hips aren't down, your hips aren't up. You want to make kind of like a straight line. Keep your neck neutral, meaning you want to keep looking the way that it's going. Don't hold your neck up, don't hold it down, hold it exactly where it felt. Um, so we're going to practice that. Let's count 10 seconds for the high plank, and then we're going to go into the lower plank. Here we go. exercises are our push-ups. I picked push-ups after planks so that we already knew how to get into this certain position. So when I say high plank, it's also a push-up position. Um, so we're going to go over, again, we're the regular push-up, the modified push-up, and then we're going to choose which one works for us. Now there's a lot of the times where even though I can do a regular push-up, I end up doing the modified. And that's when we have those crazy workouts, our Tabata workouts, where every, um, every other set of exercises is 20 seconds of push-ups. So you wanna make sure that you are mindful of how many push-ups you have to do. Because again, like I keep saying, form is very important. So if you're not able to complete a set of push-ups Go down to the modified version. You're still going to get the same workout. So let's start with both of those. Um, we'll go over the regular push-up. So again, you just get into a high plank position. Your neck stays neutral. You're looking off, like at the ground, right where you are. Just 
lower your arms. It's okay if you can't go all the way down. Um, go as far as you can and then come back up. This is not a competition with anyone else but yourself. So you know by doing the push-ups what your goal is by the end of fitness. But just stick with what you have right now. Keep pushing and you'll keep you'll keep succeeding. So we're gonna try just five push-ups in the high plank position. Here we go. All right. Now we're going to go through the modified push-up. This is the one that I tend to do more. Um, so just like we did in the modified plank, as soon as you get into that high plank, you just put your knees down exactly where they are. Your feet stay put. You're not moving anything else. Your toes need to be on the ground. So when you come up into a high plank, right where you are, just drop the knees. You're still going to get a full workout. It's still going to be pretty difficult. Okay, so let's try five that way. Here we go. So I want you to, I'm going to put on some music and I want you to sit and think for a couple seconds, which one is better for you, the regular push-up or the modified push-up? We're going to do 10 of them. You're going to give me 10 push-ups. So I'm going to choose the modified one. Here we go. Get into your position. Make sure your form is okay. And begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. All right, shake it out if you need to. Make sure to always have water on hand, too. All right, so we have two more exercises that have to deal with our, our arms and core. We're going to go through burpees. Then we're going to go through mountain climbers. Now, with burpees, there's a low version, there's your base, your medium ver version, and then there's an advanced. Of course, there's other things you can do as well. Um, but we're going to go through each one of those. I'm going to start with the base. So what the base is, is basically average. So this is the average move. And then you can always modify lower or higher based on your needs for that day. So, proper form for a burpee. There's a few things that I do want to point out. When you, when you start a burpee, you want your arms up. You're gonna come all the way down to the ground. Um, let me turn this down a little, just so I can explain to you. When you come down, that hand placement is very important. You don't wanna have your hand up. So when you come down, Make sure your hands are flat on the ground. Keep them flat. That's one of the, the things that a lot of us do. If you watch, we're gonna, you're gonna pull your hand up. Make note of that and push your hands down so they're flat. Another thing is when we go into a burpee, we have to watch our placement of our knees. So let me see if I can do this sideways. So when you come down, you want to make sure when you're jumping back up that your knees are going on the sides of your elbows. And then you can come up. If you don't want them inside, it's very bad for your knees. Okay, so we're going to go through base and then low and then advanced. So here we go. Regular base, hands over your head, come down, out, up. Here, no jumps, no nothing. Okay, so let's try five of the base ones. Here we go. 
One, two, three, four. Remember to watch your hand placement. And five. Okay. Now the lower impact version is going to be same arms up. Now you can choose to step out one foot at a time and come back up. So again, what that looks like from the side. So hands come down, step out, step out, step in, step in, and back up. All right, so let's try five of those. Here we go. Hands down, step out, step out, step in, step in. That's one. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right, so now for the advanced version. So with your advanced version, there's a few different things that you can do. You can add a push up for when you go down. You can add a jump for when you come up or you could do both. So we're going to show uh, both ways with the push up and with the jump. All right, so first I'm gonna do with the push up, and the second I'm gonna do with the jump. You can determine whether you would like to combine the two. Um, and I'm not gonna make anyone do five of these because again, they're advanced, so we're still working up to that. So arms still uh, start up, hand placement still important. Remember all of those things, knees stay on the outside of your elbows. Push up. Up, hands up. Okay, that's the first advanced version. The second one, we're going to add a jump, not with the push up, um, unless you're daring. Go ahead. Arms up. Here we go. So you can do a tuck jump. There's a lot of different jumps you can get, get into, but those would be your advanced versions for a burpee. All right, now. We have mountain climbers. So I'm gonna go over the correct way to do mountain climber and then a modified version in case again, every single day is gonna be different for you. So there might be a day where you can do a lot and maybe the next day you can't and that's okay. That goes for every single one of us. That goes for Miss Farrell, that goes for your mom, your dad, everyone. So, Regular mountain climbers are gonna start in that high plank position. I'm gonna do it from the side so you can see. Um, you want one knee up at a time. Um, you also wanna make sure that it's going into a, like a smooth motion. So here's your high plank. Start with one knee, then you're gonna switch. One foot on the ground at a time, just to keep the fluid motion. So let's try that for about 10 seconds. I'll count it out and then we'll go into what the modified version looks like. All right, get in position. Ready? Here we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Modified version is not going to have any jumping. So we're just going to pull up a knee at a time. This is really good for your core as well. It is going to help you strengthen. It takes away the jumpiness, so it's a little bit less low impact, but it doesn't mean that it's changing any type of intensity. You're still going to feel it. So go into your high plank. Instead of jumping, you're just pulling a knee up as far as you can and down. Other knee up. Down. Yeah. 
pull it up as far as you can. Let's do five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so we finished all the upper body exercises we're going over today. So I'm gonna get into some of the lower body. A lot of it has to do with squats and lunges. Honestly, I think that's all I have today because the form for both of those are so important. And if you're not doing them correctly, you're not getting a good workout and you're not taking care of your body. You can get yourself very hurt by doing a squat or a lunge incorrectly. So we're gonna go over squats first. So there's squats, sumo squats, and then the advanced version, jump squats. We're gonna start with a regular squat. It's just like whenever you go to sit down, okay? So your hips, your hips are a hinge. You're going to pretend like you're sitting down so your, your feet are about a hip width apart. So you should be able, like your feet are right under your hips. You're not going wide, okay? So it's just like you would go and sit down, how your knees are bent. See how my knees are bent over my toes? That's exactly what we want to accomplish with a squat. Now, it doesn't matter how far you go down. So if you can only go down here, that's okay. Make sure your, uh, your feet are flat on the ground. If they're wobbly, come up a little bit. It just means that you need to build into that. So make sure that your stance is strong, right? We have to build a good foundation, a good base in order to go further. So you have to remember that. So if you're wobbly, don't go down that far. Feet hip width apart. Your knees are going to be going over your toes. Your hips are a hinge, but you're going to keep your back, your chest up. So when you come down, you can look directly at the camera. You can look directly at me. Okay, same thing from the side. I'm directly down. All right, we're gonna try 10 of those. Get in position, make sure your feet are about a hip width apart that your knees are gonna go over your toes. Please pay attention to that stuff, all right? Ready, here we go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There we go, all right. Now the sumo squat. It's called the sumo squat because it's kind of the stance of a sumo wrestler. So instead of having your feet hip width apart, you're gonna bring them out. Now here's the deal when you bring them out, you want them slightly slanted, but you still want your knees to go over your toes. That's always the most important part. So make sure that when you are into position, start by bending your knees a little bit and make sure that they're going directly over your toes. Okay, here we go. We're going to try 10 of these. Remember, you don't have to go that low. Ready, go. One, two, remember, keep your chest up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Next step, jump squats. So I am gonna have you try these. Try for 10, if you can't do that many, that's okay. So you might feel a little bit of a, a burn when you're doing it. It's not that you're pulling muscles, it's just your muscles like yelling at you basically because it's a lot. So go back to that hip width position, okay? Knees are still gonna be over your toes, you're gonna start down, jump up, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're gonna get a quick drink again. All right, so next we have our lunges. There's your forward lunge, your reverse lunge, side lunge, and then a jumping lunge. Jumping lunges clearly are advanced, um, but I'm gonna go over the form just in case. We're all at different uh, parts of our fitness journey. So maybe you're in an advanced part and you can go ahead and do the jumping lunges when I have my friends do the regular lunge. Just be mindful of what you and your body need. We're gonna start with a forward lunge. Now, a forward lunge is just, you're stepping forward, but you wanna keep everything at a 90 degree angle. So your knees, I'm gonna show you from the front, show you from the side, and then we're gonna practice 10 of them. I like to keep my hands on my hips for balance. Make sure that you know what you're looking at. So it doesn't matter what foot you start with, you're gonna step forward and bend. Come back, other foot, step forward, bend. Okay, so what that looks like from the side, step forward, bend. Okay, I'm at just about a 90 degree angle, so like a right angle. So both of your legs should be making almost L's. Okay, again, your, your knees are over, over your feet. Make sure that your form is correct. You don't want to step out too far. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter how many you do. So I'm going to say we're going to practice with 10. But I would rather your form be correct and you be taking care of yourself over how many you do. All right. So let's try 10 of the forward lunges. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Remember, keep your chest up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Next are your reverse lunges. It's exactly the opposite of what we just did. So we were just stepping forward. Now we're gonna step back. Hands on the hips. Same thing, you still want the 90 degree angle, you want your chest up. You wanna make sure that you're stepping within a line. So you don't wanna step out to the side, you wanna step straight back and then come down. Okay, and then your other foot, step straight back. Okay, now, you might be a little bit wobbly, Miss Farrell is too. That's why it's more important for you to go slow and to get your form right. The rest will come, the strength comes, but you have to make sure that you're doing everything correctly. So again, from the side, what it looks like, you step back, switch. Okay, so now we're gonna try 10 reverse lunges. Remember to step back. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. So we're gonna get into the advanced jump lunges. I'm just gonna show you how to do them. I'm not gonna make you guys do 10 because they are a bit harder. And if you don't have the correct balance, you might hurt yourself. So try it, but please, if you think that it's too hard, don't worry about it, okay? So you start into a lunge. I always like to go forward. Make sure you, so you start in your lunge you're gonna just keep switching, okay? You can try that out, pause the video if you wanna keep trying that. Um, otherwise, we're gonna get into our side lunges. So the side lunge is the one that I always see, 
the, the most mistakes. So we're going to go over this step by step. I use this not only in my Tabata workouts, but I use this in a lot of my cool downs because it's a great way to stretch your legs. So when you're going into a side lunge, okay, you're going to step out. When you step out, that foot that steps out, you're then going to put all of your weight on this hip. Foot is forward. Knee is going to be over your foot. Okay, so when you step out, all your weight goes here. Look, make sure your foot is forward, your toes are forward, your knee is over your toes. Okay, same thing with the other side. Step out, all your weight comes on this hip. Foot, toes forward, knees are over your toes. Okay, so we're gonna practice that. Once you step out and you get that position, you can just go side to side. Okay, so let's start from feet together so we can really get into that position. We're gonna step out. Doesn't matter what foot you start with. So here we go, one, two, three, go. Step out, toes forward. Fix yourself, that's two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, good job. All right, so we have one more song to go through, and this has to do with all of our sit ups, our crunches. I want to go over the importance and the purpose of each one of these, but also certain things to tell you so that you don't strain your neck. Okay, so that's the most important thing with sit ups and crunches is, is your neck. So before I put the music back on, I'm going to let you know your neck should never be in pain. You might feel like a, a little bit like a little bit uncomfortable and that's okay, but make sure you rest your neck, but you should never have neck soreness or neck pain. So the minute you feel that you put your neck down and you let yourself rest, okay? Just like any other muscle, you have to build up your neck muscles. So just again, keep in mind, you might have to rest. If that gets too heavy, Put your head down. There's other things that you can do besides, and I can go over different uh, modifications with that as well. So we're gonna start with a regular sit up. There's a few points that I want to go over. Now, the first point, feet are flat, okay? You're gonna go all the way down, all the way up. Arms are just for comfort. So they can be across your chest. They can be behind your head. You are not pulling on your neck, okay? Do not pull on your neck at all. If they're behind your head, have your arms out to the side. They should not be pulling this way because that means you're pulling, okay? Everything comes from your stomach. Have that do the pulling, okay? So if they're here, you have to pull yourself all the way up. You might want to start here or here with sit-ups, okay? So if you reach up and then come back down, they are harder when no one's holding your feet. Just try your best. Even if you can only go here or here, it's fine. That's your goal by the end of fitness is to get up. All right, so let's try 10 of those. Here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Next is your basic crunch. You're going to, it's about half the movement of what you just did with your sit up. Um, I like to put my hands behind my head on this one, but again, all the pulling comes from your stomach. Do not let your neck pull. All right, so what a crunch looks like, 
Hands are for comfort, so wherever you want them is fine. You're going to pull up. So it doesn't matter where your arms are, you're just doing this motion. You're pulling up and it's coming from your stomach, okay? So it's gonna go up and down. Let's do 10, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Okay. All right. The next one I'm going to go over is your bicycle crunch. That is going to be elbow to knee. Okay. So what your what your knees are doing, you're going to bring one up and then the other one up. Now your elbows, it's going to be the opposite one. So elbow to knee, elbow to knee, elbow to knee, elbow to knee. We're going to do 10 of these. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. One more to go over, and it's your reverse crunch. Here we go. So I'm going to pause this just so I can explain to you the difference between everything we just did. Okay, so sit up is definitely important for core workout and to get yourself strong with all of the other exercises. A crunch is focusing on the top part of your stomach. Okay, the bicycle crunches are focusing on the obliques, your side stomach muscles. The next one we're gonna do is a reverse crunch. That's focusing on the bottom part of your stomach. You have a lot of muscles and there's so many different exercises we do so that we can reach all of the different muscles. So that's the purpose of doing all these different types of exercises. Okay, so for a reverse crunch, you're going to lay completely flat. I always have my arms at my side. They can be down at your side. They can be out like a T, whatever you're comfortable with. So you're going to bring your knees to your chest. So you're gonna pull up your legs, knees to chest, okay? Even if you can just do a little bit like that, it's fine. Again, that, that'll be your goal by the end of fitness is to get those knees to your chest. Here we go, we're going to try 10 of them and then we get to stretch. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. Well, good job with all of the different exercises. We're going to stand up, stretch out some of the muscles that we worked. The cool down is just as important as every other part of your workout because you have to make sure after you work those muscles that you're stretching. So not stretching at the end of a workout can really cause you to pull a muscle because your muscles are already going to be tired and weak and they get, they get stiff because the whole scientific part of exercising, you're breaking apart muscles and they rebuild. So just keep that in mind. Stretching is just as important. Let's stand up. We're gonna start with our neck. So I want you to take an ear to a shoulder. Your other arm, gonna push away. Switch, ear to shoulder, opposite arm, push away. Okay, roll those shoulders back. And forward. Now you're going to take one arm, bring it across, grab it with your other arm gently, and pull. Take that elbow, put it behind your head. Other arm across. Up. 
more stretches to do. There's one more song to play. All right. So we're going to start with our hamstrings again. So you're going to cross one leg over the other, come straight down, flat back, reach down as far as you can. Come back up, other side. Now I want you to grab onto something. We're gonna stretch the tops, the front part of your leg. Those are your quads, okay? So hold on to something. Other arm is going to grab the ankle. Okay, hold that. Now push that ankle into your hand. You should feel a deeper stretch, the top part of your leg. same leg, I want you to pull your knee up towards your chest. That's going to open up your hips. One more exercise. This is like a four. You're going to cross in front of your leg, sit back, and then push on that knee gently. Right, now switch sides, so if you have to find something else to hold on to, that's okay. Ankle in your hand. Now push that ankle into your hand. Knee to chest. Now cross that over your other leg, sit back. All right, good job. I'll see you next time.